You know, never mind the damage Arrive Can did in this country. You know, the fact is we also got severely ripped off. And there was a Globe and Mail report uh, last week that talked about the cost of this boondoggle, which was double the cost the Trudeau government reported. We ended up paying 54 million bucks for a dud. And the Trudeau government has been questioned about this, you know, and they're refusing to name the subcontractor to maybe explain the ludicrous costs on this thing. But there have been a lot of other comments coming from the tech sector who say, look, this could have been done for a whole lot cheaper. And then over the weekend, I was reading about two Canadian tech firms that decided to put their money where their mouths are. And they set out to do a hackathon over the weekend to see if they could recreate the app and for less. And well... The winning company was a Toronto company called Laser because they did it in two days. Chital Jaitley is the founder of Tribal Scale. He joins us now. Great to have you, Chital. Hey, how are you, Alex? You were part of this competition. You were not ultimately the winning uh, company, but nonetheless, a win for your industry uh, because you you were basically able to prove that what the government took months to screw up uh, could be done locally for much, much less. Yeah, I think, look, I mean, I, they, I don't think it was a competition between us and Laser. I love the people at Laser. They do great work. And, you know, what we did is we said we, we, we had a conversation as it, with our tribe about what's happening in the news. And obviously this $54 million spend on Arrive Can came up. And, you know, we said we're pretty sure we could do this over a weekend. And it was completely voluntary. Our teams, you know, on Thanksgiving weekend, our passionate group who self-organized and Sure enough, we're able to recreate the app. I will say cloning an application is a lot easier than creating it from scratch. However, the magnitude of $54 million spend really shines, you know, puts a spotlight on what happened here. We got, in Canada, Alex, we got some of the world be- world's yeah. best development firms. And brands from all over the world come to us to build their mobile products. And, it's, you know, I can name... 10 other companies that are really good at what they do based in Canada. And so for this to happen and us not even be consulted about it was, was wrong. And so, you know, we wanted to shine a light that, Hey, things can be done smarter and how can we help government at all levels across the country moving forward so that this doesn't happen again? Well, that would be nice because when it comes to government doing anything, they always manage to screw it up. It doesn't matter the level of government. It doesn't matter who does it. They seem to be insistent on signing ludicrously secretive contracts, overpaying by millions. And then a lot of times, whether it's a Rive Cam or I'll go back to Presto. I don't even know. I don't even know if Presto works yet. I mean, it, it was outdated before you even hit the market. But we keep getting these very expensive government contracts that never justify the costs. I think I, I, I and I think the solution that we we as a group and you know I was talking with Zane at Laser and I think we want to come up with is we're going to start Canadian Technology Consortium. Um, I want tech leaders from across Canada to sign up and let's create a process for government to actually come to us with any questions they got and we'll get the right leaders and the expert in this industry to consult them on what they should do for free. I think all yeah. of us as Canadians want to see this happen and not see, not see wasted. We want to, at Tribal Skill, I like to bring capital efficiency and productivity to every single customer we got. As a Canadian, I want to do this for our government, and we have the right people across Canada who could be part of this consortium and consult the government for free so we don't see this type of wastage. Yeah, and I don't laugh at you. I just laugh at the fact that it, I mean, it's just it makes so much common sense that yeah, it should be looked at this way. And yet, time and time again, we don't end up going down that road, which begs a whole lot of other questions as to where did all this money go? Who got it? Who got the contract? But of course, all that is is kept secret. I mean, the government, I'm sure, will be challenged and, and asked about this, and they'll always fall back on the go to uh, Chital, which is well, you know, we have security issues we have to worry about. We had to make sure that X, Y, Z was covered. So they'll justify this somehow. I think but I think not justified, Alex, when you say security. I'm I trying mean, to be fair with... to the government, okay, for once. I'm just trying no, to be I mean, we, we work, <laughs> I mean, a lot of the banking apps that we have are yeah. built by the companies that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, yeah. You know, we build banking apps. We build healthcare apps. We build super secure, really complex applications that do a lot more than, let's, let's face it, ArriveCan was a glorified form. And... You know that there shouldn't have been this this type of spending on uh, on this kind of a product. 
No, there shouldn't have been. And why, as Canadians, we continually put up with this is based on the fact that governments always are able to spin themselves out of it. And because we don't get the transparency into the decision making and they can blame it on procurement processes, they seem to get away from it. But I totally agree with you. We have an unbelievable tech sector in this country. Um, we're trying to brand, you know, Toronto and, and urban centers like Toronto as the place to draw investment to. We had what, well, the failed um, you know, project that was going down at the waterfront to, to wire the whole city. But again, we, we have the people and the brains in place. And, and, and for whatever reason, the governments at all levels are not turning to our tech or they're turning to some tech. It's just not the tech that seems to make sense. So, uh, Alex, I, I, you know, I think this is where I'm an optimist and I hope this consortium we're putting together that grassroots across the country comes together and literally we're, we're us in the tech sector are putting our hands up to say, hey, government, we're here to help. But like any any questions you have, problems you have, come and let us be your soundboard and let's let's try to help you do things right. So how, ultimately, then, it took two days to create this per, this version of Arrive Can, and how much could it have been done with given, you know, it's 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 not the the entire picture, but how much could and should this app have cost the taxpayers of this country? You know, I think even 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 saying this with all the strategy work you may need to do, all the security stuff, all the rebuttals that I've been getting over the weekend of people trying to poke holes in what we're doing, I can confidently say this should have been less than a million bucks. Ouch. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts. All right. Nonetheless, we'll see what happens uh, moving forward. But, uh, you know, it, it, when the when the saying follow the dollar is uh, it comes up, this is what we mean. You've got to follow the dollar because it rarely adds up when it comes to these government procurement contracts. Very much appreciate your time, Chatel. It's a, a fun project way of doing things, but certainly a sobering um, outcome. Yeah, I hope I hope for change. We want to be the ch we want to act by being the change we want to see in society. So let's make it happen. Let's make this positive and let's help Canada become better at everything it does. No question about it. Homegrown talent. Totally support it. Thanks so much. Thank you. That's uh, Chatel Jaitley, founder of Tribal Scale, uh, just one of the companies that was involved in this hackathon over the weekend. And they are right. It is astonishing that this Arrive Can thing cost as much as it did was as awful as it was, and the cost can't be justified. Will we ever get to the bottom of it? I'm sure Tom Korski, who I'll chat with in the next hour, will probably figure out some document, uh, you know, on it to kind of uh, follow the dollar. But Anthony uh, House father just last week said, you know, they, they're they're justifying these costs. It was there's not a cent they would have spared to keep people safe with this app. So they are justifying the <laughs> masses of millions that were thrown out the, the window on this. Uh, so they, they are going to defend this. But again, it's not defendable.